tax filing season starts today, but the IRS is warning of possible delays. We'll tell you what you need to know to get your refund quickly. This is a little different though. I think he's considering taking a year off, sort of a semi-retirement. Could Sean Payton be leaving his head coach position with the Saints? Well, we'll tell you what the rumors are right now on KSLA News 12 at 4. Broadcasting live, KSLA News 12 starts now. Well, that rain is here, and right now we're taking a live look along I-20 at Common Street. You can see that traffic is a little bit slower right now, as I just said, wet roads and things like that. So we're going to send it over to our first alert meteorologist, Jessica Moore. And uh, Jessica, during my lunch break, it was already starting to rain. Is that going to be the story for the rest of the day? That is going to be the story for some of us throughout the rest of this evening. Uh, we're taking a live look at first alert Doppler radar and weather too. Again, we've seen rain as early as around the noon hour, late morning, early afternoon hours, and we're still seeing that this evening. So you saw those wet roads. If you haven't yet uh, headed home or if you have anywhere to go for the rest of this evening, want to make sure that you are taking your time out there on those wet roads. This is a look at live first alert Doppler radar. We do have some showers to the south. If I could get this changed, though, I'm going to be able to advance it. But however, you can see light showers all across the Arklatex right now. Zooming into Tatum, that's where we're seeing some of the light, mo the moderate to more heavier showers here. Also down towards Beckville as well. Just continuing to see more showers pop up on the heavier side. Let's take a look now near I-20 in Northward Ida. Vivian seeing some of those moderate to heavier downpours, Cotton Valley as well. So we're seeing mostly light showers near Benton, Oil City. However, we do still have rain that will continue to go throughout the rest of your evening. Right now, we still have heavy rain over towards the Wally and Manny as well as Florine. We'll take a look at the rain chances for the rest of this evening coming up in your full forecast. Well, thanks, Jessica, and thanks for joining us at 4. I'm Destiny Patterson in for Corey Johnson. Mountain, mounting legal worries for Shreveport as the city's former controller put leaders at Government Plaza on notice today. He's planning legal action against the city for age and race discrimination, plus whistleblower retaliation. Ben Haber, Long the man you see on your screen, was the city's Aries. controller. But in mid-December, the 85-year-old man claims the city fired him just days after he allegedly refused to sign off on financial improprieties. Hebert felt violated state law. He says he told his boss, Casey Brown, and Mayor Adrian Perkins about the problems last month. Problems he claims includes failures to meet IRS rules, alleged violations of state law related to reporting travel expenses and errors in payroll preparation. But according to Hebert, the only action taken by the city was to fire him. I am disappointed, but not surprised. I have watched this administration at work for three years. I don't want to throw anybody else under the bus, meaning people that have suffered from some of this that have talked to me. Uh, but there, there, are, there are a number of people that are very concerned and uh, don't feel that they have the voice to to say that. Casey Brown, Hebert's former boss, now serves as, as the city's interim chief financial officer. Hebert says he's bringing his legal issues with the city to light because Brown is now Mayor Perkins' choice for permanent CFO. And Hebert hopes city council and the mayor will consider his claims before appointing Brown. Now, word right now from the city, no word right now from the city regarding Hebert's claims. Not long ago, Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards announced he plans to focus on investing in education and infrastructure with a new budget proposed the upcoming legislative session. He wants to invest in higher education initiatives like Title IX, as well as early childhood education. Plus, he wants to give teachers a $1,500 pay raise and support staff a $750 pay raise. We, we know that we need more teachers in, in our classrooms, more teachers uh, with the right education and the experience and, and so forth. Uh, so we, we know that the, the teacher pay is, is incredibly important for, for all of those reasons. Uh, and by the way, what happens uh, at an education uh, institution on a certain campus, uh, it isn't just the teachers, it is, I mean, primarily the teachers, but, but it's the paraprofessionals, it's the, it's the, the uh, counselors and, and the custodians. I mean, it, everybody there plays a role in educating our, our, our young people. 
If you're planning to vote in the Texas primary election this mark, there's some days you'll want to keep in mind. The deadline to register to vote is next Monday, January 31st. That's one week from today. Early voting begins January, February 14th and runs through the 25th. February 18th is the last day to request a mail-in ballot and election day for the primary is Tuesday, March 1st. Today, Oshner Health held its first COVID-19 briefing of 2022. The health system's president and CEO says most of the state saw its peak in the Omicron surge earlier this month. However, northwest Louisiana shows early indications that the surge just peaked last week. The biggest thing to note during the surge was how quickly the virus spread. The peaks are different based upon which market you're in. Um, it does appear as though that January 11 was around the peak for the New Orleans area. It does look like uh, uh, North Shore is a, a similar situation. As you get into Baton Rouge, Lafayette, North Louisiana, uh, it does seem like uh, there's probably a, a one to two week delay. LSU Health Shreveport has resumed testing at the old Chevy Land dealership on Linwood Avenue. Starting today, you can go there for COVID-19 testing and vaccines. It's open from 10 to 5. Starting today, you can also check out your nearest pharmacy or health care center to pick up an N95 mask for free. It's part of the Biden administration's campaign to ramp up access to high quality masks. You can get up to three of them. Meanwhile, you can also get free at home COVID tests at this time. To apply for one of those, go to covidtest.gov. As always, stay first alert to any breaking or developing news in the Arklatex by downloading our KSLA News 12 app. Make sure that you scan that QR code you see in the bottom left of your screen, and it'll take you straight to our COVID-19 hub. Tensions are high in Ukraine with Russian troops on standby, potentially, potentially ready to invade. President Biden spent the weekend huddling with top advisors, weighing options on how to help the U.S. ally. Chris Wynn is in Washington with the latest. Amid mounting fears of a Russian incursion into Ukraine. Even as we continue to prioritize diplomacy and dialogue, we must also increase readiness. The Biden administration is considering deploying several thousand U.S. troops to Eastern Europe and the Baltics. The potential move meant to deter Russia from invading Ukraine. The United States has taken steps to heighten the readiness of its forces at home and abroad so that they are prepared to respond to a range of contingencies including support to the NATO response force if it is activated. With Russia amassing troops along the Ukrainian border and British intelligence services reporting the Kremlin's possible intentions to install a pro-Russian leader in Kiev, U.S. and NATO allies are taking a firmer stance. The Kremlin called those reports hysteria. The United States will act firmly in defense of its national interests in response to actions by Russia that harm us, our allies, our partners. Russia sees NATO's growing support for Ukraine as a threat to its own security. There are certain basic principles uh, that we're not, in, by one iota, going to compromise on, including, for example, uh, NATO's open door, uh, the right of countries to uh, choose with whom they'll associate. The U.S. military also reacting to another incident overseas after dozens of Chinese warplanes crossed into Taiwan's air defense identification zone Sunday and Monday. China's aggression following a U.S.-Japan show of naval force in the Philippine Sea. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn. Opening statements began in the federal trial of three former Minneapolis police officers charged in the 2020 death of George Floyd. They're being charged with violating Floyd's civil rights and failing to provide him with medical care. Two of the officers are facing an additional count of failing to stop Derek Chauvin, who was convicted of second degree unintentional murder, along with other charges. Their defense attorney, attorneys are likely to blame Chauvin for the killing. The greater Houston area is mourning the loss of two cops killed within 24 hours. One suspect is in custody while police are now on the search for the other. On Sunday evening, a driver gunned down Corporal Charles Galloway in an attempted traffic stop. Galloway was getting out of his vehicle when the shooter started firing multiple shots into his patrol car. He died at the scene. Just a few hours later, Sergeant Ramon Gutierrez was killed in a hit and run accident. The driver was intoxicated and is now in police custody. And so we're just going to embrace this family and support them. And we ask uh, that our community, as they always do, uh, lift us up in prayer.